today he's doing, um, this morning he's doing a lecture, and to introduce that lecture, I want to introduce Annie Engel, who's with Good morning, folks. I'm Annie Engel. Please welcome Mr. Philip E. Walker. Today is Dr. Martin Luther King Day. It's a day that I look forward to every year. And do you know I forget my own birthday? People literally have to remind me, oh yeah, happy birthday, oh yeah, that's right. I forget my birthday, but I never forget Martin's birthday. I look forward to it with great anticipation, and I hope you do also. I want to look today at what we have left from him. What is the legacy that he leaves behind? Well, though that legacy is so large and so broad that there is no way that we're going to cover all of that in an hour. So I want to pinpoint just one aspect of what this great man has left for us and the challenge that he has left for, for us to continue the work that he has done. But before we start talking about what, we left, what he left behind, let's look briefly at how he got to where he was. He was set up, that's what I'm trying to show you. He was set up to be great. He was supposed to be great. And so are you. That's part of the legacy that's here for us, OK? How many of you young people are blessed enough to be attending college? Raise your hand if you're blessed enough to be attending. Raise your hand high because you should be proud of yourself. Raise your hand high. Keep your hand up. Those of you that haven't made it to college yet because you are still attending 80% of your classes in high school. I was almost said 100, but I'm not going to do that for you. 80% of your classes in high school, raise your hand. Just raise them up high so I can see them. The college people, don't put your hands down. You're still proud. <laughs> Everybody with their hand in the air, I expect you to be great. The Lord already, you can put your hands down. I know who you are now. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord already gave you greatness because human beings are great. They're just not great at everything. Education will help you find out what you're great at, and you will accomplish just as much as Dr. King did in your field. I expect that of you. Just like Dr. King's forefathers expected him to be great, I expect you to be great. No excuses. But imagine, if you will, you're standing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, and everywhere you look is people. The only place there ain't people is water. <laughs> and sometimes it's people in the water. <laughs> trees. They're in the trees. They're, they're everywhere. And their color is as varied as the rainbow. Imagine it. This was his kickoff. This was his media hype. <laughs> this was the catapult that made it possible for him to get acknowledged for the work that he was doing. Watch out now. I said you're going to be great. You are going to be great. That don't mean people know it. Huh? What? 
Yes, you could be absolutely great and nobody know it. Ain't no harm in that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Some people are great and people know it. It doesn't make them greater than us. It simply makes them better known. Well, he was better known, y'all. <laughs> this thing catapulted him so that many of the activities that he led, some of those activities, the same people that are in this room today led those same activities in their community, but there were no cameras shining at him, at her, at them. And so he was catapulted so that the work that he did to create equality for all of us would be noticed. So much so that it became a threat. Well, we just went through Martin's life real fast, didn't we? <laughs> right? And he finally concludes that he can no longer not speak against the Vietnam War. Okay? There's another major movement going on at the same time, remember? It's that whole peace movement. So there's the civil rights movement, and there's this peace movement, and they're happening at the same time, and they're as major as that picture that I was trying to get you to paint. Both of these movements are major in our society. We haven't seen movements that big in our society other than the stock market <laughs> since. Okay? Well, if this movement joins this movement, <laughs> and this movement joins this movement, now we got one big movement. You know what that's called? Revolution. Who said it? You're absolutely right. Give him a hand, y'all. Give him a hand. All right. The legacy. What did he do for us? What do we have now that we didn't have before his work? You tell me. Let's list some of the legacy, because I want to make sure that we know how much we have here. Someone, what do we have now? Civil Rights Act. We have the Civil Rights Act. Absolutely right. And it's possible that without Dr. King, we would not have the Civil Rights Act. Thank you. Yes. What else do we have today? What other legacy has been left by this man's words and deeds? Yes. Gender equity and hiring. Gender equity and hiring. Do you know that that movement that was growing at the same time was brought right into the work that the, that the people that were doing in the civil rights movement and the peace movement? That it wouldn't make sense for them to cut the women out. It couldn't be. And instead of doing what we often do in our society, we say one thing and do another, these people just couldn't do it. So they had to find the right way to support that movement as well. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Some of us owe our jobs to it. And if we don't watch out, that same stuff is going to be taken away. We're going to need another Martin to bring it back. Uh, let's not go there. OK. <laughs> I always like threes. One more. Something else that he's left behind that we wouldn't have. Yes. An example of nonviolence. Mm. Here's a man that lived his whole life and died so that he can say we can fight without violence. What a concept. He proved that it's absolutely possible. You're absolutely right. <laughs> But the legacy that I want to look at for the rest of our program is the legacy that gathers us together today. He left us a holiday. <laughs> now, there aren't a lot of people that leave a holiday around for us. <laughs> it doesn't happen. And we are very blessed. How many of you, raise your hand. How many of you were here when 
another major holiday was created in our nation. Another one other than Martin Luther King Day. Raise your hand if you were here. I didn't think so. <laughs> and do you know what? We're likely not to see another one for that much longer. This is a special legacy. And it gives to us a kind of special responsibility. We'll talk on that in more detail. But first of all, we want to analyze our holidays, how, how, how we in our nation build this holiday thing and, and what it is that we celebrate. OK, I counted it up. I just looked at my calendar. It's pretty easy to do. I looked at my calendar to see if I was working a job job, like many people do, which days would I have off? <laughs> OK, when you get a job, first thing you do is say, which are the actual off days? Do you all take all the actual off days? <laughs> so I did that exercise. And I came up with that there are 10 major holidays. We have 10 days. Martin Luther King is one of those days. Of the nine other days, New Year's Day and Labor Day are not about war, OK? They are rather anomalies. New Year's, I mean, you got to do something if the year turns around. So OK, we'll make that a holiday. That kind of makes sense, all right? Labor Day, Labor Day comes from the last struggle that happened, the working people of America, right? And so there's a kind of anomaly. Uh, uh, unusual holiday structure in our nation. But check out the other holidays. Memorial Day has the job of remembering those that were lost in war. Independence Day celebrates our, uh, celebrates our nation's first war. Veterans Day recognizes our country's warriors. President's Day glorifies the commander in chiefs of America's greatest wars. If we hadn't had the Revolutionary War, and if we had uh, not succeeded in the Civil War, you know, maybe we could have worked our way around World War II and World War III. I don't know how we could have, but maybe we could have. But if we didn't deal with the Civil War, it's all over. We didn't do the deal with the Revolutionary War. It's all over. So the great American wars, the two presidents that were the commanders of that, we celebrate those days. Columbus Day, now check this out. Columbus comes over and discovers America. Weren't there some people here already? <laughs> <laughs> so if there were already some people here, and those people aren't here anymore. It's just their names are here, Yakima and all that stuff. Is here. But, but the people, we don't see them, OK? Then there must have been something that happened between the discovery and today. Well, we know what happened. The land that those people lived on was stolen for our good. We are reaping those benefits today, all of us. Me too. <laughs> are reaping those benefits today. The point that I'm making is the activity of Columbus was the work that set up all of the Indian Wars, all of them, because it was all about taking the land that they were standing on. The only peace days we have in this 10 is Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now, it doesn't make much sense there ought to be a law against anyone who take offense at a day of your celebration. Because we all know in our minds that there ought to be a time when we can set aside to show how much we love you. And I'm sure you would agree what would fit more perfectly than to have a world party on the day you came to be. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I just never understood how a man who died for good could not have a day that would be set aside for his recognition. Because it could never be just because some could not see the dream as clear as he, that they should make it become an illusion. And we all know everything that he stood for time will bring. For in peace, our hearts will sing 
thanks to Martin Luther King. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Why has there never been a holiday where peace is celebrated all throughout the world? Now the time is overdue for people like me and you, who know the way of truth is love and unity through all God's children. It should be a great event, and the whole day should be spent in full remembrance of those who lived and died for the oneness of all people. So let us all begin. We know that love will win. Let it out, don't hold it in. Say it loud as you can. Happy birthday. That's Stevie Wonder. Have you ever heard of an unsuccessful MLK Day? I've been tracking these MLK holidays since before it was a national holiday. And I have never heard of one that was not successful. I think his spirit is here with us. I think he has actually left his spirit so that when we gather in his name, you've heard this one before, so that we gather, when we gather in his name, he kind of watches over us. Okay, yeah, that's good, that's good. And I'm thinking that he's saying it's all good because I've never seen one that didn't succeed. And so not only do we have the responsibility to establish what we do, what is the tradition of this holiday, but I think we got some help to help us establish it, so that when we pass it on to our children's children, they will automatically know what to do. So create ways to celebrate this day and share those ways. My son, uh, a senior in college now, has, has got to writing plays about what it means to be a young person in the legacy of Dr. King and how we going to move forward. He's, he's doing his second one today. Figure out something to do and do it. And you're going to get some help, too. And you deserve credit, too. You deserve credit for coming and sharing and then taking whatever you have witnessed in these activities and talking to your young people about it, talking to each other about it, God, talking to your enemy next door about it, if that's what it takes. And I think you should give yourselves a hand for the work that you've done so far. <laughs> Share with me some of the excitement, that's, that exciting things or, or uh, uh, successful things that have happened to you on these MLK holidays in your life. Tell me about what's happened on MLK Day that was real nice for you. Yes. A few years ago, we landed in Phoenix, rented a car, I guess perhaps it lost track, but it turned out it was MLK mm -hmm. Day. And we pulled out of the rental car agency. There was a parade going down. <laughs> they all we the parade. The car, got in the parade, and there was a big festival, and a lot of great things happened. Like they gave you your own festival, huh? Our <laughs> arrival at Phoenix. Yeah. 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 More. Give me another of those stories. I like those stories. Yes? Uh, I lived in Santa Cruz for quite a while, California. Yeah. And it's Santa just Cruz. a huge day of celebration yeah. everywhere there. Yeah. yeah. Santa Cruz. It's a big party day. Uh, Santa Cruz, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. MLK Day is a party day in Santa Cruz. <laughs> you, you know how young people go off for a certain day, they go to New Orleans for Fat Tuesday or something like that. MLK Day, Santa Cruz. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't been there for a while. More. Mm -hmm. The historical value of learning about um, Martin Luther King Jr. and other people um, in that movement. Yeah. And, and also the excitement of meeting you and Daryl Milner. Yeah. From Oregon. Sure, you're so right. That's been really great for all of us here. Yeah, and and it and it's and it's come to you. You 
You don't have to make it happen. Come to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I remember uh, sharing a, a talk with a friend who's been some of the marches in Washington. Yeah. And down south and talking about the fear and the excitement. And, and, and don't they become different people? I mean, you can watch the person transform right in front of you. It's almost as if they go right back to those times. Because I think we do. <laughs> I think that's what actually happens. Yeah. I'm hoping that the present generation is going to find some things that excite them so that it causes them to become anew when they tell the story. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, I'm just glad that this day that shows, you know, it represents black males that was not violent and shows that black males are capable of yes. not being violent because of all the stereotypes that go around right now. Yes. And it just makes me feel, as a black male, that we have a day. And it just gives me a feeling that I can't even explain. So it's not that's explainable. What it does for me. That's what it does for me. Yeah. You'd have to be there, everybody else. Everybody but us black males. Well, there, there are three of us here. We, uh, <laughs> uh, in slavery time, that would have been called uh, revolution. <laughs> um, you have to take my word for it. It's not explainable. It's not, it's, it, 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 you, there are not words to put in it. But I don't know this brother from Adam. But he starts to speak, and I know like all of what he's saying. <laughs> I get the whole thing, and I don't even need the words. He just starts the words off, and I know what he's, you know? Now I'm trying to put it in words. It's unimaginable to think that every image that looks like you is either bad in some kind of way, or we haven't seen the whole thing yet. <laughs> right? It's either already bad, or let's watch it a little closer and we'll see the bad. <laughs> this is what black male in America feels like. I don't know what it actually is. Who knows what it really is? But this is what it feels like. And when you come around and make a holiday, and all the media is like, OK, we celebrate this day, it is such a shock to our system. It's a shock <laughs> to our system that it makes us even more speechless. That's a major legacy. And there are young men who will grow up, and they will always have this one example of a great black man that doesn't do something with a ball. <laughs> a great black man who is serious as opposed to makes jokes. Or, you, you get it? Yeah, you pointed out something that is so obvious to everybody. And most of us miss it. Yeah. Yeah. More? Yes. Last year, my son's uh, fourth or fifth grade teacher put on a uh, Martin Luther King play. Good for him. And to see her, uh, to see this play in Mountain View uh, High School Auditorium with 60 white kids on stage telling the Martin Luther King story. <laughs> yeah. It's just great. Yeah, and you know what? In order for her and the rest of her college, she went by herself to present the story to others, they had to learn a lot, didn't they? I bet they was coming home teaching y'all stuff. Yeah? That is up there. There's much to do in our society. We have a lot of work to do.
And I surely don't discourage us from continuing to work until our dying day to make the land of the free, the home of the brave, with freedom and justice for all, I think is actually possible. I think we can really do it. Now, we probably can't do it in a week. We probably can't do it in a lifetime. But at some point, we can leave that real nation for our children that are coming. That's if we work on it now. So I suggest you keep working, that you not give up. But when this day comes around, pat yourself on the back a little bit because you need it. Celebrate what you have accomplished so you can be encouraged to accomplish even more. Give as purely as you possibly can with no hopes, with no thoughts, with no inkling of what you shall receive in return. And you will receive so much you can't handle it all. Let that be the legacy of Dr. King.